Oh, okay, so I will start with a with this uh, presentation regarding uh, our fuzzing carrot in Istrosec. Uh, we have been doing some research in the Windows Media Foundation platform in the last year. And this presentation should be about why is fuzzing still really important to think to do and why it can uh, lead to uh, identifying some critical risk findings. So uh, some information regarding me. Uh, I'm currently working as a penetration tester and uh, head of offensive security department in the company called Istrosec. Mm, I have experience with the web application infrastructure and cloud penetration testing, also doing great teaming uh, engagements with my colleagues and also social engineering um, simulation attacks and also attack simulation. Uh, regarding the research in, the, in our team, we are performing the web application security research, focusing on the commonly used web applications and also the fuzzing projects, which are focusing on the operating system components, PDF readers, browsers, and also the V8 JavaScript engine. I'm also a holder of some security uh, reality certificates, such as the GCPN and others. So moving to the fuzzing, mm, I think pretty much all of you know uh, something about fuzzing. So I, I will just skip it to the point that uh, why is it still relevant and how you can approach the fuzzing in uh, in this year or the, in the last year. So uh, uh, my current flow of fuzzing, just really simplify, is, is it in a way that you have to create a corpus. So uh, in this case, for example, we are um, we will be performing the fuzzing of the uh, um, some kind of uh, player that will try to play uh, media file formats. So we need to download as many cases as possible. However, they need to be uh, different or partially different, so we can reach the uh, code coverage or the or all of the functions of the of the program. Uh, secondly, we will take the file from the corpus and try to modify it in some way to perform mutation. And this file you will pass to the target program you have to fuss or you would, like, you would like to fuss. And this program should be attached to some kind of debugger so you can um, really monitor the, uh, the behavior of the program. So you will see which kind of DLLs are being loaded, which kind of functions are being executed and you can see if the file is creating some kind of new behavior. This, this is the, just the uh, simplified uh, uh, flow of the fuzzing. However, as you can see on the right picture, uh, is it important to say that, that uh, fuzzing the application as is could be really simple, but not so effective than uh, fuzzing the application with a harness. And if there is a question, for example, what is a harness? I, could, I can simply answer it in a way that, let's say that the program itself will load many, many other stuff like uh, DLLs from the operating systems, and it will slow down the execution of the file. Creating a harness, you can simply just map a function to your memory and execute only the some part of the code you are really interested in. So it will save a lot of time and you can perform much more faster execution of the mutated files than just fuzzing the application as is. Uh, moving to the next slide, uh, we have chosen the Windows Media Player as a, as a target program in the Windows Media Foundation platform. However, it's really important to say that um, uh, this program is uh, really, really specific in, in many ways. Uh, its default media player in many windows, starting from the Windows 3 to up to Windows, um, up to the latest Windows, also uh, Windows 10, and uh, it has a lot of features. For example, you can you can burn CDs, you can read the CDs, you can create a really uh, enhanced uh, playlists and stuff like that. And also, without being without using the Windows Media Player, you are probably using some part of it. Uh, in case you are using the Explorer uh, in the in the Windows to um, explore the directories and files, so you probably 
and do not know about it, but uh, there are still components of the Windows Media Player uh, being used in, in the Windows itself. It can play a big range of file formats and it's also being distributed as a 32 and 64 bit uh, pre installed on the Windows. Uh, what is really important to say when focusing on fuzzing this type of um, program, you want to focus probably on a um, file format and find some specific, uh, probably undocumented file format. So going through the list on the right side uh, of the file types supported by the Windows Media Player, you can see that uh, Windows Media Player supports a large list of uh, different file formats, uh, such as the Windows Media formats and also the probably the most used ones, MP4 and others. However, there is a list of uh, undocumented file formats that are not supported, but playable uh, using the Windows Media Player. And also uh, it leads to the discovery of the uh, not uh, the, support, the probably support of the latest media files types that are supported, for example, by the browsers. So um, in the next slides, we will be talking about the uh, file format, which we have been uh, performing the um, fuzzing on and why is it uh, undocumented. However, to understand uh, why it's important to choose uh, latest or the undocumented file format, you probably need to know about the file type itself. So uh, perform quick research on the file structure and the complexity. Or there is another thing wh um, which is possible to do and is to carry out the reverse engineering to uh, reverse the platform, or in this case, the Windows Media Player, and to find out the functions and DLLs that are being loaded when you are trying to play a file. Because each file uh, is um, being, lo being loaded under different codec, and there is a possible to see the list of the all of the possible file, file types. Uh, maybe the last thing, which is not mentioned here, but it can be done, is creating a corpus of the media file types um, downloaded from the internet or some GitHub repositories. And you could try to play any kind of uh, uh, media file format and to see the behavior in the debugger itself without needing to reverse engineer it. So we have looked more to the uh, WebM file format. Uh, why, why this type of file format? Because this type of file format was introduced to the Windows as a, as a specific kind of library only a few months ago. And it was previously launched by Google Chrome or the Google company. And uh, later than that, uh, it was the DLL from the used by the Chrome was also introduced in the operating system Windows. And the later then was used by the Windows Media Player. Uh, so this file format is the missing in the list of the supported file types. It is using different types of codecs, WP8, WP9, mm, AV1, Vorbis, and Opus. Uh, it's really important to understand the what is a, a valid uh, or the functioning WebM file. And to see that, uh, I really recommend you when we will be trying to, let's say, fast some stuff in the um, some kind of media player, you would like to attach a debugger and see uh, the behavior of the um, of the program itself when trying to play this type of file. Because this type of file is um, mainly uh, uh, recommended to use in uh, streaming platforms or for the web applications because of the size of the uh, of the file and the optimization being used there. Uh, it's based on the um, Matroshka type of uh, file. So basically, uh, it, is, uh, it is using a well-known uh, file structure or the media file type of, uh, structure. Um, the questions here are which functions are, be are being used or which DLLs are being loaded since it is not supported by default. Uh, if it, if it can uh, increase the code coverage uh, 
in the Windows Media Player file, and we we can move on to the uh, to the slide when we are going to play the file or run the file in the in the in the fuzzing process. So uh, another slide, and we would like to move on to the fuzzing part or how you can fuzz this type of target. So uh, preferably, I would suggest uh, to build a, a virtual machine only for fuzzing with focus on performance. So we are fuzzing currently the Windows um, media platform, so it should be Windows. And it should be strictly modified to only run uh, this, this type of application, nothing else. So you can, for example, kill the Explorer and other processes itself. Secondly, you, you would like to prepare a corpus, which will be based on this uh, file type. In this case, the WebM file with different codecs, different resolutions, different sizes, length, colors, and stuff like that. Preferably, uh, we are talking about uh, 1,000 of files files with a length about ranging from one kilobyte to one megabyte. Uh, the, the smaller the file, the faster the execution. So I would that, uh, keep that in mind that a uh, file really uh, differs on the performance. The next thing is the file mutation setting. Uh, there is there's the thing with the, uh, with the file structure itself. You have to understand the, the headers of the uh, file. So I would suggest to only modify part of the uh, content of the file which can be modified. So we are talking about the, uh, about the body of the file. Uh, there are different ways you can, uh, you can mutate the file content. For example, you can uh, swap the uh, bytes or you can uh, increment the values. You can delete some parts of the file and stuff like that. So there are many different approaches which could be carried on in the file mutation setting. Uh, the next step would be you want to execute the target program with this modified input file to see the behavior uh, running uh, in the debugger. And if everything works, you will just try to automate it in a way that it will uh, attach the program into the debugger it will load the file and you will just see if it crashed or not, or hanged or freezed. And you would like to save the uh, input file if uh, something, for example, broke. Uh, so that's the, that's the fuzzing uh, process in uh, this specific case. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we are going to talk about the crash tree, triage. So when you uh, uh, approach uh, some kind of different behavior than expected, you would like to, uh, uh, in, in some way, for example, in a manual or automated way, to uh, create the uh, triage, the, uh, um, the file discussing the, the crash. So in this case, uh, in the first hours, uh, when you are running the fuzzer itself, uh, it will probably not create so many crashes, but if it will does create a, a lot of crashes, crashes, it uh, there is a possibility that something is broken because uh, we are talking about uh, assessing a new part of the um, of the code or the array that is probably not well uh, researched. However, it still does make sense that we are talking about the uh, um, really supported and, and tested uh, program. So you would not see so many crashes in the in the first hours of the fuzzing. But if there are some crashes, I would prefer to use the manual crash triage to, to see if everything works, uh, it, if everything works. Um, to do the manual crash triage, I, I would suggest you to use the WinDebug preview or WinDebug, uh, the default um, Windows debugger which is really great for this type of applications. Or also you can use the back ID or the exploitable uh, with hand with the WinDebug. So uh, on the right, you can see that 
Um, there are folders with name such as exploitable, probably exploitable, probably not exploitable, and unknown. Uh, um, these types of uh, directories are being uh, loaded with the, uh, with the crashes. Uh, in this case, the exploitable is being used, the exploitable DLL, uh, to um, analyze the crashes and uh, divide it into this type of directories. And here is one crash. Uh, here, here is the actual crash of the uh, how how does it how does it look in the Windows debugger platform when uh, trying to play some uh, modified file? In this case, is MP4. Uh, as you can see, it will crash uh, on some functions, and there is there is a name uh, get sample time, which means that um, uh, specifically this file uh, has modified the metadata in, in a way that uh, it can crash the whole program. And also it can not only crash the Windows Media Player, but also the Explorer when trying to open directory with this file. So without uh, trying to play this file, you can easily crash the whole operating system, which is really, really bad. And this type of, this type of uh, files or fuzzing uh, uh, can be can be seen just by uh, creating uh, uh, this type of files running under the Windows Media Foundation platform. So uh, this is really uh, important to to see that uh, when you create this type of file and you try to analyze where it crashes, it's really important to see the to find the core issue because many times this file could crash also the browser because the browser will try to load DLL from the operating system or the Explorer, which is trying to uh, load uh, uh, some kind of uh, image from, from the file or description regarding the file, such as uh, um, uh, file type or length of the video, it will get to the point where it can crash. So regarding this specific crash, Mm, there is another thing uh, which I would like to point out. And um, after the after we have been carrying the um, fuzzing, um, I have seen this tweet regard uh, regarding the uh, webm file type or the newest Windows component. This DLL, uh, which is in uh, by default in Windows in the latest uh, Windows, uh, it is currently being used, for example, by the Chrome itself. And so there is the thing that uh, um, another security researcher pointed out that he has been successfully uh, fuzzing this uh, component just by trying to load uh, um, this type of uh, media files in the Chrome and crashing, uh, and, and crashing the Chrome. But uh, the core issue was in the Windows DLL. And he pointed he pointed out some um, uh, informations like like this one the, the stack trace from the Windows debugger. As you can see that there is a there is a line that it's pointing out the mastering metadata. So it's very similar to the our case, but um, it's really important to not uh, to not stop uh, at this point. So you would like to go further and. To, to focus on that which applications or, or which programs are using this type of DLL. Because it's not only about the browsers. It's all about the stock default applications that are creating a new attack surface for attacker to possibly uh, execute malicious code or uh, perform a privilege escalation. So that's why I am focusing mostly on the operating system and the functions from the operating system. And this particular uh, bug or vulnerability can uh, create a whole new problems in the operating system, not just only in the application. So moving to the results um, of our fuzzing, fuzzing process, we have been running the um, fuzzer for six months, 24 seven on multiple VMs. We have, been, uh, we have identified more than 10,000 of crashes 
uh, most of them were not exploitable because uh, they were just uh, leaking some part of uh, data or being category cat categorized as a uh, read access violations or nulled the reference, but 23 of them were unique. Uh, two of them were critical remote code execution vulnerabilities, and they made it to the page Tuesday with the following uh, CV uh, identifiers. It's really important to say one thing that uh, the most important vulnerability, the first one, the critical one, uh, was found uh, in the in the in the first weeks of the of the fuzzing process. So. Uh, it still does make sense to really not, not maybe do the optimization of the fuzzing platform, but it's really important to start as soon as possible when you discover a new, uh, for example, DLL that is being loaded or used by Windows. Um, moving to the to the bounty and stuff with the um, Microsoft communication. So basically, when you are reporting the the vulnerability to, to the Microsoft uh, Researcher Center or platform. Uh, there are many things you need to um, uh, submit. For example, you have to be aware that you are submitting proof of concept or uh, really uh, researched data about the crash itself. So um, in this case, we, we have been talking about the Windows Insider Preview because we have been fuzzing on the latest operating system versions. And oh, uh, it, um, these two bugs were pointed out as a, as a remote code executions because um, we could modify it, um, some part of data in the memory and we had the writable access to the memory. And in a case, you will write an exploit <clears throat> and it will be a fully, functionally, uh, fully functional exploit uh, on the latest version of operating system bypassing the security protections, the bounty will double. Lessons learned from uh, this type of uh, fuzzing process or what you can possibly learn from this. <clears throat> you have to be fast, otherwise uh, the, the fuzzing will be, or the, or the issues uh, generated by the, by the fuzzings uh, could be uh, duplicates. It's from our experience that is really important to start as soon as possible and the later perform an optimization of the, of the code or the fuzzing process that you have to start. It's the most important thing here because it's all about the, the first initial idea to, to see there is new function there is new DLL, so let's start. Uh, secondly, it still does make sense to fuzz. It's maybe not the best way to um, to assess the all the, of the possible risks or identifying the all vulnerabilities in the code of the application, but it's much faster than performing static code analysis. And there are many ways where you can find um, the bug possibly sooner because many people are performing fuzzing on a, um, using really a big infrastructure. For example, Google, Google or Microsoft is, is doing, uh, is performing a really uh, big um, fuzzing on uh, their uh, cloud environment. They are using this power to, um, to um, test or assess the open source um, projects. Uh, one of the most important things here is to be creative and to create your own tools and environment because when you will be using uh, tools provided in the tutorials and uh, maybe just publicly available info on the internet, uh, there is um, less chance to maybe find new uh, new vulnerabilities in the software because it's all uh, it's all about um, being really you have to know what you are doing and be able to maybe adapt to the latest uh, trends in the in the applications and application security uh, in the in the when you are starting with the fuzzing yes it still does make sense to use the typical programs such as afl 
or Bufas and, and uh, Syscaler. However, later you would like to switch to your own tools to perform a research on uh, uh, the way how you can speed it up and what can be performed uh, maybe better. And you would like to know each component in detail. There is also always place for optimization. So uh, starting from the software part, you would like to perform program patching and create a harness for the, um, for the program itself. In this case, when talking uh, about the Windows Media uh, Foundation or the player, you would like to focus on the different part of the functionality. For example, we have been only focusing on the playing of the file, but there is an uh, option to um, to transfer the file, to create a enhanced uh, playlist and other other things. So you would like just to copy the, the function, uh, wrote, write a small script to perform this execution only in the memory and save a lot of time. And uh, from the hardware point of view, uh, I would suggest to um, focus on the fastest RAM possible and also uh, the SSDs. And last but not least, be patient. It takes a lot of time um, to find really impactful and critical vulnerabilities. Uh, you have to be prepared to perform the homework on the, on the maybe not so uh, important stuff as it, as it could be seen in this case. Uh, regarding, for example, the webm file, but it's still important to learn, educate about the possibilities of, of the, um, of the, in this case, of the of the file types, and uh, later execute the the fuzzing with with the results. So, thank you for the watching, and if you have any questions, please write it down.